Andrew, and this is the Who Dat Discussion, a New Orleans Saints podcast where we talk about all Saints news, opinions, and reactions. So this should be a really good episode as the Saints beat the Philadelphia Eagles in the divisional round at the Superdome on Sunday, 20-14. to 14. Um, We're just going to recap that whole game. Now they're going to be advancing to the NFC Championship game. We're going to get into the notes, the storylines, the group-by-group recap. And look, to me, this team, they showed a lot of heart in this game to get this win. And now their next task will be to play the Rams on Sunday to go to the Super Bowl. This is it. This They win this next game. We get a chance to play for the Lombardi Trophy. And just saying that really psychs me up. And I think it psychs every Saints fan up. Because this next game is going to be so pivotal. I mean, look, you're speechless about it. But in this episode, we will recap the game on um, Sunday with the Eagles going into New Orleans and getting the loss here. So we're going to start with some notes. And our first note is that the Saints won. And now they moved to 6-0 under Sean Payton at the Superdome. To me, that's just really, really, really impressive. To be undefeated at home six games in a row is huge. It just shows the home field advantage. It shows what the fans were able to do. Shout out to everyone who's in the Superdome, even everyone who's cheering at home, getting loud, even at home. I mean, that place was ridiculously loud. They were doing like the halftime interviews, like what the coach said at halftime, and Pam Oliver was doing it for Fox, and you couldn't hear what she's saying. Like, and my TV was pretty loud, and you could not hear what she was saying. That's how loud the crowd was coming into the second half. And it wasn't just the second half. It was the first half. To me, the crowd brought this game and brought this team back into it, being down 14 nothing. The crowd didn't leave. You know, um, I did say in my last episode, I don't care what the score is, this crowd better be loud. And it was. It didn't go away, and it was right there until the end. So thank you to all Saints fans that were there and were really cheering our team on. The team definitely feels like, and they feel like there's a different dimension when they play at the Dome. And that's what I feel when I watch the Saints game and the Saints team, excuse me. But to me, that is just really big there. Um, Our next note is that Michael Thomas, he had the most receiving yards in Saints playoff history one game. I mean, look, Michael Thomas, he's so good, competitive. I mean, you can't even say anything about it. What he was doing last Sunday, um, really, to me, it's one of, the best performances ever in Saints history in a playoff game. Um, You're going to look at other games. Receiving, I think, was the best performance, period. And you could put up other games where he played Xavier Rhodes. To me, he's had two of the best games in the playoffs in Saints history. And to me, he's right now top three receiver, maybe even higher, because to do this in the playoffs is so impressive. I mean, catch after catch. And it wasn't just like first and 10. They were third and 15s, third and 13s. And he was making every catch. Obviously, you're going to give to Drew Brees, who threw perfect balls. And he showed up this game. And we'll get into that a little later. But Mike Thomas, to me, had maybe one of the best performances receiving in, Saints, in playoff Saints history. Probably did have the best performance. I'll say it. He had the best performance in Saints history receiving the ball. And him and Brees and Kamara, basically those three little Ingram two, willed this offense to get, get it to 20 points in the comeback. So to me, that was really, really big. And then also... Um, Alvin Kamara had a 100-yard scrimmage. That's the first time he's ever done that in a playoff game. I thought that was really big there. Marcus Lattimore had his first interceptions in the postseason, two interceptions. I mean, that's really good. He's now leading the league in the postseason for interceptions with two. I mean, look, that last interception, just the way it happened, it reminded me a little of Tracy Porter's against the Vikings. It was a little reminiscent of that because it was just at the end of the game and the Eagles were driving, the Vikings were driving, and it just happened to go the Saints' way. Porter jumped the route. Um, Lattimore with great hands getting a tip pass. I mean, it's not easy to do to catch a tip ball. Um, you know, maybe it looks easy on TV, but it's not easy to catch a tip ball, and he was able to do that. So that was really big. And then also, you got to give it to... Sean Payton keeping with this run, even down 14 nothing, They ended up with 137 yards rushing between Kamar and Ingram. I mean, just a really good job there. You saw a little of Taysom Hill, who I thought played really good in this game. Um, and I think he was an X-factor. And then also the offensive line played their first game fully healthy. Everyone was healthy. I mean, not like they were, they were playing definitely banged up, but they all played every snap since week nine. And look, when you're looking at all these notes, I mean, I do think that this game, I mean... You look at when this team was down 14 nothing. They couldn't do anything right. Um, Breeze threw the pick. They couldn't run the ball. They they couldn't do anything defensively either. No pressure. Really, they didn't get pressure the whole game. 
But to me, I think that's just where this game went when you looked at it. And then it was the Taysom Hill play, uh, the the fake punt that they got the first down, and the Lattimore interception. And then after that, the game completely switched. And then, look, to me, if the Eagles thought that the Saints were just going to die down like the Vikings did in last year's NFC Championship, this is not, not the same team. This Saints team, you don't know how to beat them. Like, if I was another team, you're like, how do we beat these guys? We come in, we even punch them in the mouth to start the game. We get up 14 nothing, which is a big, big comeback. They came back 14 points. That's the most in Saints history. That is our last note. But to do that, you have to be some type of team. And then they could also, they, they could throw 35 on you, 35, 40 points, and they could beat you in a shootout. Then they could also beat you 12-9 like they did against the Panthers and have a defensive slugfest. The team can do it anyway, and in the playoffs, that's so pivotal because look at it when if they're going to play the Rams on Sunday which they will have to play it will probably be a more high scoring game than 20 to 14 and I think the Saints are apt to score a lot of points and if it's not defense plays really good maybe the Rams defense steps a little bit I'm still fine with them winning in a shootout you got to be confident in this team and I said it on the podcast with all Saints considered which is a great podcast you all everyone should check it out if you haven't already um I was on the last episode and just last thing I said or one of the last things I said it was that you can't really be that nervous with this team, even though, look, every single time was nervous when you're down 14 nothing in a playoff game. Because this team, you got to trust them. And it just shows another way you got to trust these guys. They had no panic. No one. Drew Brees was fist pump, pumping everyone, and he was going to get a fix, I knew for sure. But it was really the rest of the team. And they showed up. Michael Thomas showed up. Um, Kamara showed up. Even Mark Ingram showed up. This offensive line, they played banged up, and they played pretty good. I mean, it wasn't the best, but they definitely stepped it up in the second half, and they did a really good job. Penalties were obviously a problem. But you got to get that fixed if you're Sean Payton. But I think overall, this team was able to step up there. So we're going to go on to our storylines. And look, obviously, we're going to our first storyline. We're going to usually do our three from the preview episode. And we're just going to add two this week. So we're going to do the three and then also adding them, um, the ones from the preview episode. So the first new one is this comeback. Um, Look, obviously, we're getting into before. When you're able to come back from 14 points, and the Eagles, they are got to give them a little credit, a lot of credit. They're a really good team. You know, they definitely deserve to be here. They were rightful to be here for sure. I mean, the Vikings, to me, were not going. They were, like, limping if they got into the playoffs. So that was good that the Eagles were able to get in because I think they were definitely the best team there. And I think they may be one of the better teams we're facing. I think that was definitely the right – the NFL got it right there. The Eagles are a good team. I think that the way the playoffs shake up sometimes, you know, not so good teams get in. And by luck, basically, I think this was a good team, and they got in. So good for them there. But the way you get down 14 nothing, completely punched in the mouth, sucker punched, and then it just completely switched. How you're able to do that, it just shows a championship team. It just does. When you're able to be like, no problem, we're still going to win this game, it shows that this team can win in any which way. And to me, that's just really, really big there. Our next storyline is the secondary and how good it played. To me, this was the secondary's best game hands down, because you got to look at the receivers they were playing and the quarterback they were playing. Nick Foles was throwing it over everyone. He didn't have the best game against the Bears, but the Bears are the number one defense in the NFL. I mean, when you look at it, what Nick Foles was, did against the um, Texans, who were a pretty good defense, what he did against the Rams, the team will be playing on Sunday. Great job. He, played, he was playing really good. And after those first two drives, which we know it takes some time for Dennis Allen to get ready and get his defense in, makes his adjustments. But then after that, they were locked down. And it showed, especially in the secondary, because they didn't get much pressure on Nick Foles. Marcus Lattimore, the two picks, he showed up to play. Locking down um, also on Jeffrey most of the game. I believe he ended with five catches, I believe, for 50 yards, 60 yards, 63 yards, five catches, 63 yards. And to me, on, on eight targets, Lattimore basically shut him down of what he was doing before. He did a really good job there. And if you really take out those first two drives, he really doesn't have any catches. I know Jeffrey had the huge drop at the end of the game, but to me, that to be able to stop him, Lattimore did a really good job on um, there. We're able to really stop Zach Ertz. Only five catches, 50 yards. You got to give that to Von Bell in the secondary there. Um, Jordan Matthews only had the touchdown. And after that, no one really did anything. You got to give it to P.J. Williams for stopping Golden Tate. I mean, two catches, 18 yards. P.J. Williams showed up. I know he had a penalty, which I didn't think was a penalty. But I think P.J. Williams, he had the penalty, and then he had the deep play that they got him on with uh, Matthews. But besides that, P.J. Williams played really good. Eli Apple. Nelson Aguilar had one catch for six yards. Eli Apple played. He had a day. Good job for Eli Apple. You didn't hear him at all, and that's a good thing. Um, really good job by Apple, and I'm really happy that we were able to pick him up because you don't even know what King Crawley would do in this scenario. Excuse me. 
And to me, you got to look at how those three guys played. And then Marcus Williams, good job. At the, they didn't have any huge deep fights down the middle. Like they were able to do a lot of the season and with Foles last season as well. That's really big. So Williams doing a good job there on the back end, really besides that deep 37-yard throw, which was really – P.J. Williams has played not um, – Williams and also Von Bell, who we talked about, was going on Zach Ertz, and he also had some really nice plays on receivers. So I think that's really, really big as well. Our next storyline is could Foles' magic continue? I know this was from the preview episode. So and really, how do you stop Nick Foles? And we said, can it continue? And it, to me, it didn't. It ran out. He threw the pick. I mean, I know it really wasn't his fault, but Jeffrey couldn't catch it, and it went right into Lattimore's hands, and Lattimore won the Saints the game. Now, it, it was over. You know, you got to put the put put it away. The magic's over, um, party's over. Like that song says, they're done. Um, look, how do you stop them? I think the Saints they did everything not to stop them in the first two drives. They were playing man. Really, I mean, look, I could have I saw it coming in that you really don't play man against Nick Foles because he's a one read QB. You do slants. There's your first read. Then they started playing zone. You started making um, Foles go through his reads, and once he goes through his reads. He's not good. You saw it. He got flustered. Even though he wasn't really getting pressured that much, he couldn't find anyone open. When you play those zones, especially when you're able to stop the run like the Saints were able to do, it's very hard for Foles to make plays, and he wasn't able to most of the game. To me, he did not have a good game. When looking at it, Foles, he was 18 for 31, 201 yards, a touchdown, and two picks. QBR of 49, passer rating of 61. That's not really good. That's not good at all. Um, you got to give it to the secondary of the Saints. And what he was putting up before this, when he was playing really good, um, pass rating was the best um, against the Bears last week. Everyone said he was so good. Nick Foles, magic. I mean, even people were texting me, oh, Nick Foles coming back, 14 nothing. This is it. And then even when it was 20-14, to people were saying, Nick Foles coming back. And then the secondary was able to shut him down. Nick, The magic was over. They didn't have enough because they couldn't score the touchdown at the end. If they scored the touchdown at the end, I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously Nick Foles' magic is still real, and they'd be going to the play in the NFC Championship game in L.A., but that's not happening. L.A. is going to come to the Superdome to play, and that's because Foles couldn't make enough plays, and you got to get it to the secondary because they did make enough plays for us. So I think that was really big there. They ended up playing the zone, which I thought was really big. Um, Lattimore played good in zone. Eli Apple played really good in zone, who's really not known to be a zone player. He was able to be successful there, and then it put Von Bell in some bad spots, and Von Bell showed up again. Got to give it to Von Bell, who made some nice plays, not only on Zach Ertz, tight ends, which he's really known to play against. He played against um, Jeffrey, excuse me, and then he also played a couple plays against um, Tate in the slot. Really good job. So to me, you got to give Von Bell credit there. Um, Our next storyline is who wins the line of scrimmage. And to me, the Saints, at the end of the day, the Saints completely crushed the Eagles in the line of scrimmage battle. And whatever you want to say, people were telling me that all the excuses were starting to pile up because Fletcher Cox was out, Michael Bennett was out for some of the game. All the excuses were starting to pile up for these Eagles fans and people that were rooting for the Eagles. The Eagles, they only had 3.1 yards to carry, 49 um, yards uh, in rushing. The Saints, um, 137 yards, 4.4 yards to carry. And Alvin Kamara, 16 carries, 71 yards. Mark Ingram, 9 carries for... Um, 53 yards. To me, and also Taysom Hill had two carries, eight yards, four yards carry. To me, I mean, look at that. strong. What we were able to do in the second through fourth quarters was run it down their throats. And that's why we had the long drives, scoring two touchdowns. We were able to control the line of scrimmage, even though it wasn't always. The first quarter was really bad. We couldn't control the line of scrimmage, both sides of the ball. They were stopping our run. They were running all over us. And then it changed. Now flip of the script. And the Saints, for the majority of the game, controlled the line of scrimmage. And you got to give that to our banged-up offensive line. And even when Sheldon Rankins is out, we're going to get to a little injury report later. But because Sheldon Rankins is out for the year, you got to give it to these defensive tackles, who I think this is our most um, depth that we've had at the defensive tackle position for a really long time. And it may be the most depth position on the team when you're looking at um, Onyemata, excuse me, um, Tyler Davidson, and um, Taylor Stallworth, those guys can play, especially against the run, and they'll need it next week. But that was a really good job by them. They came in and did an amazing job. You got to give kudos to them because they played really good there. So I think we were able to win the line of scrimmage. That was huge. Um, we only gave up two sacks. We got, we got no sacks on Foles, but it was, just, it was really hard to get sacks on Nick Foles. He's a good player, and he gets out the ball quickly. But he wasn't able to. We weren't able to get to the quarterback. But the back end saved us. Played really good. So that was really big. 
there. But to me, it's the run. We were able to stop their run. No problem. So to me, you got to give it to linebackers too. Demario Davis all over the field. Um, same with Anzalone. Players like that, they just played really good in this game. And then our final storyline is how will the Saints passing attack do against a lackluster Eagles um, defense secondary? And look, Saints passing attack, got to give it to Drew Brees. To me, MVP performance, big time. He played big time. I know 20 points doesn't sound like a lot of points. It wasn't 35, 45 like they were doing in the beginning of the season. But when you have 11-minute drives, you can't score that much points. When you get out to that deficit, you knew that they weren't going to put up 35. They weren't going to put 35 and three quarters. Maybe they would get to 27 or something like that. But when you have those huge drives, and it wasn't just like one big drive, like the 11-minute drive. They had just, I mean, these big drives for the first touchdown, 12 plays, and then the 17 play, obviously. You see it, and I mean, just that's it, it's unspeakable how great the Saints were able to do in the second and third quarters, just moving the ball down the field, even the fourth quarter. it's It was like, I mean, play after play. And we were getting penalties to push us back, and they still couldn't stop us. With all that help, Michael Thomas did enough. You just get 16 yards to the first down, third down, 16, 13. Breeze, stepping up, making big plays. That's what this team needs, and it happened. And Michael Thomas played the game of his life, I think. And I think it will continue. I don't think it was the game of his life, because I think he could do that again. He did basically what he was able to do against Rhodes, but, you know, Xavier Rhodes' great corner wasn't there. So you had Rasul Douglas or Avante Maddox on him. And then what happened? Then he was able to really eat, and they had to go one-on-one. And everyone was saying, you know, go one-on-one, play zone. That's what the Eagles did this game. Well, last game, they went um, double-team Mike Thomas, and then Traquan Smith had 157 yards on 10 catches. And what do you think Ginn's going to do? Because Ginn's better than Traquan Smith in that uh, second wide receiver role. So to me... The Saints, they picked him apart. And also even Kamara, who had a couple of big catches before the half, he had a couple of big catches. And to me, it, they just did enough in the passing game. And they played really good. Breeze over 300 yards passing. And then especially after the first quarter, he really did all that in three quarters. And to me, that's just really impressive. And if he can do that against LA, get touchdowns, they got a couple of field goals in this game, convert those to touchdowns. And I think the Saints will be in really good shape there. So... That wraps up our storylines and maybe a little ranting by me. But still, I think this was just showed so much about the Saints team. And I think it was a great team win. So now as we go to our group-by-group group, um, recap, we're just going to go through um, down the list from quarterback, skill position, O-line, D-line, linebackers, secondary, coach, special teams, really how they played. And we're going to start with the QBs and Drew Brees. And to me, this is an A. Um, he did have the pick, so I can't say A+. Plus. But when you're looking at Drew Brees and even uh, Taysom Hill, who to me was just amazing, if you want to put him in this category, um, a ton of big plays, and we'll get to him a little later. But Drew Brees, what he was able to do is just outstanding. He ended up with 301 yards. He was 28 for 38, which is really good. Um, Two touchdowns. He had the pick earlier in the game and two sacks, 18 yards given up there. Um, QBR was 66, uh, 65.8, and then QB uh, pass rating, excuse me, was 103.1, which is a good passer rating. And what Breeze was able to do in this game was, look, they took shots down the field. He missed a couple of deep balls, which to me, um, especially with the pressure in his face, he just couldn't get it down there. You know, he is going to be 40 years old tomorrow, so happy birthday to Drew Breeze. A little early birthday for him. Um, but what that opened up, then they had a respect tag game. And then Michael Thomas was able to go all over the field, find those um, soft spots in the zone, um, look, he wasn't even the only one. Kamara had a couple of big plays. Ted Ginn had a couple of big plays. And they just did enough. You got to give it to Drew Brees stepping up in the pocket because there was pressure. And he was able to move all around, not get sacked a lot, and able to uh, convert huge third downs. And you got to give that to Drew Brees. When it was third and 13, third and 16, they picked up. They picked up a lot of big first downs, third and seven, third and eight. I feel like it was always those long thir- uh, third downs, excuse me. And they were able to pick them up. And look, penalties put him back. And I think. Sean Payton will get that fixed. I have complete confidence that he'll get that fixed. But to me, what Breeze was able to do today was legendary. It was a legendary performance for him. Um, look, it wasn't his best game, probably, because he had the two of the pick. But it was an amazing game how he was able to help build this team a victory along with Michael Thomas on this offense. Because it was, it was a carry job by him and Michael Thomas. It was, I mean, look, the dominance, and they couldn't stop him. And I don't think the Rams can stop him either. 
Um, you want to put Keem Tlaib on him, an old Keem Tlaib who's physical. And you think Mike Thomas is also very physical. And I'll take the young, the young buck against the old veteran in those scenarios. And if they're going to put him on Marcus Peters, I'll gladly do that because Marcus Peters got absolutely torched by Michael Thomas in the first game. Michael Thomas is a bad man in the words of Stephen A. Smith. I mean, I don't watch him, but I mean, that's obviously a really good saying. And he is a bad man. What Michael Thomas is able to do on the field, we'll get it to him in the skill position. It's just crazy. And look, I think Breeze puts him in great situations, so you got to give him an A there. But Michael Thomas is doing really good too as well. And that segments us great into our skill position group. And look, to me, you got to give them an A as well. They played really good. You got to give it to the running backs, Alan Kamara, Mark Ingram. They had a very solid game. 140 yards rushing is a good game, 137, whatever it was. And between them and also Taysom Hill, Traquan Smith also had a run. But, I mean, against stacked boxes, because especially with Mark Ingram, who was going up against stacked boxes, they were able to run the ball with some sort of success. Nine carries, 53 yards. It's not bad. It's pretty good in my mind. You know, it's, I believe, 5.6, 5.8, 5.9 yards per carry. Excuse me there. Um, he did a really good job. Alvin Kamara um, with the 71 yards and that last run just to close it up on like the third and 10, third and nine. He was able to get the first down to close the game. And that was just really big as well. When you look at it, um, what the wide receivers were able to do, Michael Thomas, obviously we just talked about it. He had himself a day, 12 catches, um, 171 yards and a touchdown. People are going to be talking about this game for a long time. Doesn't matter if the Saints lose on Sunday, um, or if they don't win the Super Bowl, whatever. This was a game for the for the legend. It was a legend for a legendary game from him, and you got to give him the credit there where credit is due because that was a really good game by him. I mean, outstanding. That puts him into me top three. How can you say he's not top three wide receiver right now? I mean, the way he's playing. Ted Ginn. Um, he only had three catches, forty four yards. Did have seven targets though, and to me, it just showed they couldn't hit the deep balls with him, but it showed that they were paying attention to him. And it made a difference in the end. Alvin Kamara had four catches, 35 yards. Um, look, that's good for him. Four on four targets, that's really good. And then you got to give it to Keith Kirkwood who caught that big touchdown. I mean, what a play call by Sean Payton. Looks like they're going to do the little tunnel screen. I mean, when you look at it, the Saints always do that play. So if you're the Eagles defense, oh, they're probably going to do that screen and hope Michael Thomas can get in the end zone. And then they do the psych and throw it to Keith Kirkwood. I mean, what a play call. And it was just such a great job by Sean Payton to put, call that and give confidence into his undrafted free agent. To put, it was fourth and goal, to put your undrafted free agent in that spot gives guts by Sean Payton, and it paid off once again. And I think he had a masterful coaching day. We'll get into that. But just what a job by Sean Payton. Um, Traquan Smith, a couple of big plays. He had a big catch. I know it was only one catch, but it was a big third down catch. That was really good as well. But to me, overall, they did play really solid. The old line, to me, you got to give him a B. I would probably just give him a B. Maybe a B plus, you could stretch it. But to me, they played average. And you want to give that to the injuries. I mean, even Armstead got beat a couple times. But Larry Walford played really good. I would say he's, I mean, he's a good, really good player there. Ryan Rancher played really good. But um, what Andrews Pete, I mean, I know the report came out that he's playing with a broken hand. And look, but he's playing though. So then don't play. If you really don't think you're ready to play, don't play. And we'll put someone who's healthy in there. Because that was not good. He had four penalties, and it brought us back. You know, think if we didn't get those four penalties. You don't know how the game would go. But, I mean, you can't have four penalties on one player. And that's going to have to be fixed by him if he wants to play. And to me, if I'm Sean Payton, and he's really not good to go. Do, I mean, look, as much as he's going to want to go, he's not the most pivotal player. But he he hurt the team. Uh, four penalties hurts the team. And he's got to change that. And I think he will. And I think he will tough it out and play. And I think if he's healthy, he's, I know he's the worst offensive lineman probably for our team, but starting offensive lineman, but he, to me, if he's healthy, he's still a solid offensive lineman. And I think maybe another week gets healthy a little more and that helps his um, handout and he can be playing and all that fun stuff. And I think that could be really big, but overall B, they played average. They gave the two sacks, Breeze had pressure all day, but they didn't get to him that much. They didn't lose the game or anything, but it wasn't their best performance. For sure, the run blocking later in the game was much better than it was in the beginning of the game. So maybe it put it up to a B plus because they did run for um, 137 yards and four and a half yards a carry, 4.4. But you round up there. So to me, okay job from them. They played average. So now we're gonna flip it over to the defense, and we're gonna start with our D line group. And to me, they're gonna get a B minus C plus. They didn't really play good today. Um, they couldn't get a lot of pressure on Nick Foles, but they did stop the run. So that's why maybe move to a B-minus. 
and they help stop the run. Obviously, they're not the only reason you stop the run, but they're definitely a good reason. Um, Cam Jordan, he did pressure a couple of times and had a tip pass, so that's good on him, but no sacks. They didn't get home on Nick Foles, so you can't really give him a really good grade in this one, but they did do a pretty good job, and I think a B-minus is good. Um, what they were able to do in the run game without Sheldon Rankins shows something, and I think that's what really brings him up to a B-minus, and to me, what they are able to do with Taylor Stallworth and um, David Onyemata, Tyler Davidson, it showed that these guys are... Um, look, they're not as good as Sheldon Rankins, but they're good, and they can be a serviceable backups. And look, it's not like they got no playing time before this. They were getting playing time. And I think all of them, especially David Onyemata, is coming in and playing his best football right now. So I think that's really big. There, onto our linebackers. To me, you got to give him an A. DeMario Davis was running all over the field in this game, making huge tackles, especially in the second half when this defense needed it most. Really good plays by him. Anceloni, a couple big plays. Um, AJ Klein didn't hear much, so... You know, take that for what you want it to be. But to me, Demario Davis, you just see that he really wanted this game and he was so happy. His first ever playoff game comes in a victory. So to me, just really big job by um, Davis, who just, to me, they played really, they got an A because, look, they stopped Zach Ertz and that was, Anzalone played him on, on him, I think, a couple of times. But it was with Von Bell, both of them. They definitely both helped. And then also, they were able to help stop the run. Really good job by this linebacking group. And that's why they're going to get an A. Maybe an A minus, but I'm gonna go with the A because I think you know they, we won. So good grade there for them. I think they played really strong. And then the secondary, I mean, you gotta give them an A plus. We talked about them earlier, but I'm gonna talk about it again. Marshawn Lattimore, the two picks, wins them the game. I would say that without these two picks, I don't think we win. He was able to be that 11th pick of the draft, first rounder, defensive rookie of the year player for the first for really to be. He was really that all pro player that people wanted to put him up to the next level. He was really the first time he did that this year. The two picks against a really good receiver in Alshon Jeffrey, against a quarterback. I know he's a backup, but Nick Foles, I mean, he's shown it time and time again. He's a definitely a serviceable backup. Super Bowl MVP. He was able to pick off a Super Bowl MVP twice. That's very impressive. And as much as you want to talk about how he hasn't been good all season, this was his signature game. And if he can play like that next week against Robert Woods or um, Brandon Cooks, I mean, they should be scared because he played absolutely outstanding. Um, technique was perfect on the pick. Just really good job by Lattimore. And then when you're looking at it with Eli Apple, you didn't even see his name called that many times because he was shutting down Nelson Aguilar, who was a good receiver in his own right. So I think whoever goes opposite of Brandon Cooks, Robert Woods, whatever, they should be scared too. And they're probably going to try to pick um, Eli Apple. And they probably tried to pick Eli, Eli Apple yesterday, excuse me, but he was the receiver wasn't open because he was playing great. Got to give it to Eli Apple. He played a really good game there. Aguilar only had one catch, and he was really playing on that side of the field where Aguilar was the one making catches. So really good job by Eli Apple there. I mean, when you look at it, Von Bell had a really good game. To me, Marcus Williams played solid. P.J. Williams, you got to give that man some credit. Golden Tate, I know he had the, uh, the holding penalty and the deep throw to Jordan Matthews, but after that, Golden Tate, only two catches, 18 yards. That's really good. Really good. So I think that's amazing stuff from this secondary there. They definitely deserve that A plus grade and I mean look they played outstanding and to me they played their best game and it showed now on to the coaching and special teams group and to me look I'd give the coaching an A plus and the special teams an A minus because let's miss that field goal but besides that I mean special teams is really good take some hill on that fake punt man I mean really the jack of all trades what a player that he is you got to give it to him because he was supposed to be look when he's playing his whole life he's playing quarterback and now all of a sudden in the NFL, the hardest football league, he goes and changes to all these different things in basically one year. I mean, what he's able to do, outstanding, and he was a huge effect on this game. Eagles didn't know what was hitting when Taysom Hill came into the game. And to me, he was definitely a difference maker. Obviously, the fake punt, he threw a deep ball that got called back, but it was a beautiful ball. And then also he had a couple of running plays. To me, just really good job by Taysom there. Really good job. Also, Thomas Morstead, really good job putting punts. Um, I was watching the game with my brother, and he was like, this guy Morstead, I mean, he's been doing this this long. It's not also that he hits it deep on the other side of the field, and but he also pins it in the corner of the field so no returns can even be possible. I mean, when, when he could do that, it's just amazing. I mean, look, he's such a great punter, and look, at his age, to me, it definitely, I mean, it's just amazing. So really good job by him. Will Lutz hit his first two field goals, but... Missed a really big field goal. 
I mean, look, at that point, I thought there was a chance that the Eagles come back and win this game. I thought a lot of Saints fans did. Everyone was seeing, oh, the Alex Smith now coming back, um, the Minnesota Miracle. Everything was starting to come back. And then all that was gone once the Lattimore interception hit. I mean, it's just crazy. I mean, to think about that. It, it looked like the Minnesota Miracle. It was going the exact same way as that game was going. And instead of not making the big play, Marcus Williams not making a good play, they made the big play, Lattimore, with the opportunistic interception. So that was really, really big. So just wanted to put that in there. And then even the same with Alex Smith. They couldn't make the big play. I know it was seven years ago, but it still happened. Or even eight years ago at this point. No, oh, seven. My bad there. But um, look, to me, it was just amazing performance by this team. And they probably lose that game last year. They probably lose that game, you know, time times ago when they were in the playoffs. But just, I mean, they won it. They played good enough to win this game, and they should definitely be proud of that. On coaching, to me, Sean Payton. Coached a masterful game. Definitely outcoached Doug Peterson. But he was able to do a lot. He was, first of all, pumping your team up after being down 14-0. It's a tough thing to do. And I know the players obviously have a lot of th- lot to do with that. But the plays that he called got him back into this. The gutsy plays time after time and again. And he knows his team. And he knows what they can do. And he did it. And it came through. The fake punt. But then he also went forward on fourth down a couple times. Um... He was able to, I mean, look, the scheme on defense, even even on offense, completely changed a little bit once the game started progressing. I don't even think on offense it changed that much, but definitely defense. And I know that's um, Dennis Allen's side, but to get your guys to play up, that's definitely Sean Payton. He was telling the fans to get loud. That matters. To me, it shows a coach that matters. He made some really nice coaching decisions with time management and stuff like that. I think that was really good as well. He was in tune, and to me, he really showed a lot on offense. I mean, more than they did in past weeks. There was no more vanilla stuff. It was, we're going to get into this intricate stuff. And he probably has more for next week too. But to me, just a really good job by Sean Payton there. So, Saints got the win. I mean, to really recap this whole game. I mean, look, it was a tale of two Saints teams this week. And look, thank God the best team showed up at the end of the game. And that's what matters. And we got the win. And we're moving on to the NFC Championship game. I mean, if you want a little quick preview and to our next episode, we're going to be talking about the Rams game. Um... And that game's going to obviously, it's going to be a hell of a game. Um, I think it's going to be a really close game like it was the first game. It's probably be a little high scoring. I don't think 45 points, 35. I don't think it'll be that high. But I think it's going to be a game, a really good game. And I, I think that the Saints, just looking at it, I mean, I haven't looked at much of the preview yet. We'll see. Um, in the next coming days, I'll do, you know, research on these two teams. And we'll see which team, to me, has the edge. But when you're looking at it straight up, Saints beat them already. And to me, these teams are playing twice. And I think the Saints have the edge playing twice, especially because the Rams do a lot of gadget plays, and they showed a lot against the Saints in those gadget plays. And they already showed a lot of their hands in that game. They thought it was a big game, they were undefeated, so they showed a lot, and they couldn't come through. Now, obviously, they're going to have completely different plays, but it shows the Saints a lot what they can do, especially with those gadget plays, moving the players. They showed a lot in that game, and I think that's going to matter. The Saints, um, they don't really show that much. He showed a little bit last week. They were starting to get a little more intricate and i think sean payton look they're already playing um as sean payton said it maybe before we were playing algebra now we're doing calculus because to me he's already like that but now to put these extra little hiccups in the game for defense to cover it's really hard for defenses to stop and I mean to put up 20 points in three quarters is really good as well and um just and especially when you're having those long drives 11 minute drives it just looked like the saints after that first quarter, they were in control. After the fake punt, it just looked like it, this was the Saints game. And even though after the fake punt, it was still 14 nothing, they were moving the field, and it just looked like the Saints were going to win this game. So I think it's time to wrap up this podcast. Um, if you liked this episode, if you liked this podcast, you can follow us on Twitter at the Hoot at This, on Instagram at Hoot at Discussion, on Podomatic at the Hoot at Discussion, and then also you could subscribe to our YouTube channel, our iTunes channel, Google Play channel, and also our Spotify channel at the who that discussion and look on there like um comment rate review just to, you know all that fun stuff i mean i know itunes has it please do that just really helpful to see how i'm doing you know leave a rate a review excuse me um to see what you think of the podcast you know rate us give us the five stars you know this is very very helpful for me and the podcast moving forward um look this is just going to be a fun week should be a fun episode next week against the rams I mean, look, I just can't wait for that game. And look, it's coming up soon. Let's just get healthy over these next couple days. Play really, really nice against the Rams. Um, You know, practice very nice, excuse me. Prepare for them and then play really nice um, on 
Sunday. We are the early game that day at 3.05 Eastern time, so 2.05 um, Central time where New Orleans is at. And it uh, should be a fun game. And uh, look, it's going to be nerve-wracking like this game, but we're playing for a spot in the Super Bowl, so it should be nerve-wracking. It's not going to be a walk in the park. We know that two good teams are playing, and we're just hoping that our team will be on top. So with all that said, I wanted to say thank you, prove them right, and who dat?